Hey everyone, welcome back to another 5th Person Roundtable discussion. So my name is Adam, I'm the editor of the 5th Person. And in this video, we're going to talk about, you know, the potential delisting of Chinese companies on the US stock exchanges. And with me today for this discussion, I have my usual suspects. So Rusmin is here with me. Hi everyone. And Victor. Hi everyone. So they are the co-founders of the 5th Person. And we have our lead analyst, which is Kenny. Hello. So today, we're going to talk about the US-China relationship under the trade war and how this has spilled over into investing as well. You know, there are companies that, uh, Chinese companies that are currently listed in the US that could be going home. So there's a US bill at this point that could potentially ban Chinese companies from the US stock exchanges. So we're going to discuss this today and what this means to you as an investor. So um, tell us more a bit about the bill first, you know, what this is all about. Uh, why the U.S. is doing this and what are the details behind this U.S. bill? Well, let's talk about the uh, bill first, right? The yeah. bill was uh, passed in May, but it hasn't been signed into law yet. But most companies on the U.S. stock exchange, the Chinese companies actually, they have about three years until January 1st of 2022 to mm. comply, right? They, they have a few requirements that they have to meet. First, uh, most importantly is they have to submit their audit papers to public company accounting oversight board in America. So the thing is, just to give you a little bit background on what, what caused all this, uh, is it all started uh, during the trade war, right? When Donald Trump said, We will make America great again and what he meant by that is basically not letting america be taken advantage by china and then they want to protect their local businesses uh, in a way that's why all the trade war started and then after that what happened was a uh, luck in scandal that's going on right they ipo after one year after 2019 and after they have this scandal where the founder uh, Charles Liu, he actually had uh, a company where they used to purchase vouchers from Luckin. So in a way, he's just churning your numbers, making the revenue look good when he is the one that's behind it, fueling the rise in revenue, right? Because he's using his own money to buy vouchers. And at the same time, when you buy vouchers, you don't really dish out like coffees to people, right? So in a way, it, the numbers look good. Your profit margins look great because you don't have to grind the coffee beans and make coffee for people. So basically, there wasn't any real coffee that was being sold. It was just basically like, a, you know, they were inflating their revenue, their sales, just to make sure that Luckin Coffee looks really good on paper, but the business wasn't actually growing. Yes. Yeah. They're probably... They, they, they probably sell coffee, but are probably not enough not, to the, match not up. Not to that amount that they were reporting. Yeah, that's okay. right. So yeah. that, I remember I remember Luckin Coffee. I mean, as a Starbucks you know, investor myself for some time, Luckin was a real threat. I mean, it was like growing tremendously in China. Starbucks has been in China for a long time as well. And they're probably the number one coffee brand. You think of Starbucks, you think of luxury in China. But then Luckin really came along and it kind of like threatened to like just change the paradigm where you know you could get coffee quick and fast and Luckin was a homegrown company it was really popular as well so it was kind of a sh surprise or a shock that Luckin was gaming their numbers as well so you think that because of Luckin this kind of triggered this US bill to kind of like scrutinize Chinese companies on the US exchanges more because basically I think remember when the news broke Luckin Luckin's share prices basically crashed right because it was no longer just as valuable as not anymore. So you think that was because of luck in that this whole thing is, is being taken really seriously right now? Yeah. Actually, to be fair, uh, I think this law or uh, order doesn't just apply to Chinese companies, but in fact, it also applies to all the uh, global companies that are listed mm. in the US uh, exchange. In fact, there are 200 over companies that I think now the US government have the hard time trying to assess mm. their audit. Uh, audited financial statement, I mean, independent audit, right? Not yeah. those that are provided by the local uh, entity. So I think because of that, they actually are uh, trying to implement this very important law to be able to access to this uh, uh, financial statement. Because 200 of all these companies, 95% of them are actually based in China or even in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, and based on the past that we, we have seen, I think since mid-2000, there were a lot of uh, leaders of Chinese uh, fraud that were actually happening around the world. I think the US is also one of the market that are actually ba badly affected. So even since when that happens, I think the government was already trying to access to the financial statement of, of all these fraudulent Chinese companies, but they couldn't get access to because China government just refused to coordinate, right? Co or or so-called work together with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of that, and then this thing is happening again, 
uh, recently with uh, Luckin Coffee, and that's I think perhaps the reason why US is trying to pressure China to really work on this aspect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it, uh, Luckin Coffee really just triggered it because they have been negotiating this with the Chinese authorities for the past thirteen years, but they haven't gotten anything yet. So yeah, the so question that's a long time, so thirteen yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a long time. So the the question is why now, right? Because mm -hmm. the thing is. Uh, most of the auditors, right, they have to submit their papers to these regulators in the US before they lease, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But the, the thing is, uh, when it comes to this, they are afraid that they, they submit, when they submit the audit papers, they might contain state-owned secrets, right? You don't know whether yeah. the Chinese government own uh, the company through various entities, right, that you might not know. So they, don't, they cannot disclose this and they cannot disclose without getting the permission of the Chinese government. So China. that's the reason why. And also, the reason why they are able to list, I think most likely is because, uh, you know, the Chinese market, the Chinese companies are growing really quickly and they don't want the US to miss out on that, right, to be able to invest in these companies. So what you're saying is that there's a lack of transparency from the Chinese side mm -hmm. when, you know, it's kind of like normal to for have companies to be audited, to be listed and all that, but there was yeah. an exception made for Chinese companies, that's what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. 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 And the reason why this exception was made was because the US uh, stock exchanges basically wanted a piece of the pie of the yeah. Chinese yes, market. Yes. Because then you get all these huge Chinese companies with the ac with access to the huge Chinese yeah. market. And then they're listed on the US stock exchanges. That's great news for the yeah. US Stock I think that's yeah. where the capital flow like if you look yeah. in 2011 right the Chinese companies accounts about uh, 93.9 billion uh, US dollar in, in terms of capitalization mm -hmm. uh, but you, you talk about right now is about close to about 1.8 uh, trillion dollars oh, so that's yeah. roughly about 3.3 percent of the US market so if the US do not attract these companies like they will lose 1.8 trillion you know uh, in terms of market capitalization okay that's, yeah. a, that's quite a Chunk of change, right? yep. <laughs> 1.8 trillion. Yeah. Just yeah. to give a context, maybe Singapore, the total market cap for all the uh, listed companies is probably about 1 trillion, and that's oh, actually yeah. in Singapore. <laughs> so it's huge, yeah, right, yeah, all yeah, these yeah, Chinese yeah. companies. Yeah. So let's just kind of like summarize it. So the US bill requires, what, what does it require at this point uh, for US, I mean for Chinese companies to remain listed on the US exchanges? So, I think there's two things. First yeah. thing is that they have to pass the they have to be audited. When the, when this mm -hmm. bill really become law, right? Mm -hmm. They they still have three years to be audited uh, by the public company accounting oversight board, which uh, Kenny brought it out. And mm -hmm. secondly, they they must not be state owned mm -hmm. by the uh, Chinese government. So these right. are the main key key yeah. items. I mean, I'm sure there are more details as well. But these are the yeah. key items that that are required for a Chinese company to remain yeah. listed yes. on the U.S. exchange, and they have three years to comply. Yes, but for new companies. Uh, for new companies right now, uh, when they want to list, they have to comply. They have to submit the papers before being listed. So, so immediately. Yeah, yeah so immediately. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. but that's the thing, because you don't know whether the uh, all these new Chinese companies can get listed. Because, like Rusmi mentioned earlier, China government actually have this law that they does not allow foreign entities, foreign you know institutes to audit Chinese companies. Okay, so right. that's going to be tricky. So yeah. the, the US wants, you to, wants to audit you, but... The, the Chinese says, no, you can't audit me, so... Then get out of the door. <laughs> That's what you guys so are coming I, I, okay. to say. So, I mean, it, I, we don't know if the bill is going to become law, but it could, yep. it could happen, it looks likely, maybe not, we, yeah. we don't know. But let's just say it becomes law, yep. so they have to comply. So yeah. what's going to happen, let's say it becomes law, what's going to happen to you know, these uh, US listed Chinese companies? What's going to happen to them? So, I mean, you can bring out examples. What, what do you think is going to happen? They have to comply, right? They have to comply. <laughs> so if they're going to comply, uh, then they will stay listed. So what do what do they what do so, they do? So any examples? So now, for example, like uh, Alibaba right now, yep, it, right. Alibaba is pretty safe because they listed in Hong Kong, right? So dual listed, yeah. Yeah, dual listed. So I think most of the companies in China, right? You have JD, you have the NetEase, yeah, 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 and and and, and, and a few others. So they, they are basically trying to uh, be dual listed as at the same time because if anything were to happen in the U S market, they mm -hmm. have uh, a backup in the Hong Kong market and they can just convert. For example, one. Alibaba shares in mm, uh, the US yeah. is equivalent to eight stocks, eight shares in, in Hong Kong, right? Yeah. So you can just convert over and it, 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 there won't be any disruption. So uh, people will not be afraid uh, about uh, owning Chinese stocks. But at the same time, that's why you need to keep up to date with, with what's going on. But you still have that buffer of like uh, till January 1st, 2022 okay. to make the decision. But at the same time, if, if like, if you're uncomfortable or if I'm uncomfortable, then I probably will not 
own any Chinese shares uh, while, yeah. Uh, yeah. At, at the same time. But I think yeah. the Alibaba CFO Maggie Wu actually also re-emphasize on this point that the framework right is already exists for the audit companies and they already been working with China and they've been talking with the SEC, the China SEC and the PCAOB and also the big four accountants. Mm-hmm. And and she also further emphasized that actually uh, Alibaba has been comply with the US gap since 1999 and their accounts is being audited by the PwC in Hong Kong which is also a affiliate to the worldwide PwC in the United States mm-hmm. right so I, I think that's the first thing I think this auditing hurdle they probably can be cleared uh, second is I think everyone knows that you know Alibaba is owned by you know Jack Ma and the, the other shareholders that that builds up Alibaba and it don't looks like a state-owned company no we don't right? know but the thing is, yeah. I welcome this sort of transparency actually yeah. give uh, investors a, a peace of mind and at the same time, you know, you don't want people come to list in your country and your people invest yeah. money into it and yeah. destroy yeah. your country's wealth instead of building wealth. Yeah. So it's actually a good thing. So yeah. th- like this, this was like what Victor mentioned, this was actually uh, mentioned in the quarter, uh, Q4 earnings of uh, 2020, Alibaba. Mm-hmm. So that's why I highly encourage uh, uh, you guys out there, if you want to find out more, just follow up with the earnings call and see what the management has to say about the, the, the compliance. The, yeah, the compliance, yeah. right? And yeah. if they are, they're willing to stay, that means it, it says a lot about the company and, it, and it's safer for yeah. you to so-called invest. Uh. Mm-hmm. But of course, yeah. I think in the event where just in case that Alibaba don't fulfill the criteria, I think uh, I think Ruspin just now talked about where you actually can transfer your share from the US exchange all the way to the Hong Kong exchange, right? Yeah. So for companies who plan to comply, they should be re- they should remain listed on yes, the US right. companies. Yeah. They have this level of transparency. Yeah. That's a good thing. But for those who can't comply or are not willing to comply, then I guess they should be heading back home. Yep. East, right? Yep. To China, either on, in Hong Kong or I don't know, in, in the Chinese stock markets. So, would you think that, you know, this is, I mean, it, it looks quite obvious, but do you think that this is going to benefit the Hong Kong you know, stock exchange and all that with all these huge Chinese companies going listing on Hong Kong? If I, I really think, there? Yeah, definitely they will uh, really benefit the Hong Kong exchange. I mean, mm-hmm. you can see that recently the Ens Financial wants to IPO and they, they didn't go to the US market, they directly mm-hmm. went to the Hong Kong market. Moving forward, I think we can see more tech uh, players uh, IPO in the Hong Kong market or in the Shenzhen uh, star market, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, it's already happening actually, yeah. yeah. So what you're saying is that these Chinese companies will just say, look at the US and go, oh nah, it's just too difficult. I don't want to go through all that. I don't want to have my books audited to that level. I'd rather list in Hong Kong yep. or, yep. or China. And but part, this, part but of this is also, also because of the recent ongoing trade war right, between okay, okay, uh, yeah. US and China. So I think a lot of Chinese company, it, it makes a lot of sense for, the, for them to access the global capital market through Hong Kong mm-hmm. right, directly rather than going to the US because a lot of people were not very sure that down the road whether okay. US is going to impose more tariff or even sanction on some of these Chinese companies that are listed in US. So, I mean, it's a lot safer to be uh, listed within yeah. your home country. It's just than, less yeah. messy, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. just less, less unknowns yeah. in moving forward. But, 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 but I think that, I mean, for those, who, those companies that it's not like Alibaba, you know, uh, they, they do not have dual listing. I think more or less uh, when they they will want to delist from the US stock exchange, they, they have to offer a premium to the shareholder. I yeah, think. there was actually rumor that Trip, right? Trip initially, mm-hmm. I think yeah. it came out with the news that they are trying to take the company private. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think if they do, of course, at this pricing, they definitely have to offer the premium yeah. on that. I think uh, there yeah. was this one Chinese company that listed in the uh, US market called Soko. So I think when this news came out, I think Tencent, the, one of the major shareholders, immediately offered a buyout offer to mm. delist the company yeah. you know, at a premium price. Right. So we probably see a lot more Chinese companies listing in in their yeah. home market. Yeah. Yeah. But in that's Hong not Kong. to say that it's not transparent in Hong Kong. Right? I mean, yeah. transparency is one of Hong Kong's strong point as well. I think they've got yeah. a very robust corporate governance over there as well. So we shouldn't think that just because they're listing in Hong Kong, they're not uh, doing the right thing. In fact, uh, I think the better Chinese companies are actually listed in Hong Kong mm-hmm. as compared to outside of uh, Hong Kong or China. Because the thing about Chinese entrepreneurs is that if they do fraud outside of China, and then they bring the money back to the home country, they don't get punished, right? But if they do fraud locally, I think the okay, so police will go after them. So the, the, what the government <laughs> yeah, is telling yeah. if you cheat my people, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Yeah. If you treat others, okay. Yeah, they're fine. Because uh, <laughs> there was this show that I remember watching on Netflix. Uh, yeah, they basically 
went to investigate all those uh, Chinese companies that okay. do fraud. I think okay. 400 companies that actually do fraud, wow. only one of them actually get caught okay. by the local police, right? Most okay. of them actually get away with it. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, um, mm-hmm. I mean, okay. Actually, no matter, no matter where you live, whether the Chinese company, whether it's the US or the or Hong Kong market, you don't actually own the company directly, right? Okay. You, you yeah. guys got to know that um, this is basically owned through a variable interest entity or the VIE yeah, structure. Yeah, tell us more about that. Yeah, yeah so and that's basically, they have this, uh, the Chinese government uh, do not allow foreign mm-hmm. investors to own uh, shares of let's say internet companies or telecommunications companies so the way they list is basically they own this variable entity or like use special purpose vehicles to have contractual rights over the profits that they produce yeah. mm. and that's it so you don't have any ownership but then a lot of people are worried that uh, because of this structure they might just pull the plug you know I mean just- it's risky right when, so what you're saying is that if I own a share of Alibaba through the US exchange. Yeah. I don't actually own a share of Alibaba. Yeah, you I just own the rights to the profits. Through a shell. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't actually have ownership of it. Yeah, yeah that's okay. right. So that's 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 a that's a, that's that's kinda of risky if it's that's very risky. Yeah. But people are saying like it's very risky. But the thing at the same time I don't think the government would allow the Chinese government would allow them to just pull the plug and just yeah. leave the uh, high, yeah. high and dry. Because the thing is nobody will trust them in the future, Chinese yeah. companies, big Chinese companies, and then uh, they will handle this properly. So it's all about reputation and yeah. really uh, being able to ride the market without giving up ownership. I think that's something about the Chinese culture or yeah. the Chinese government is to have strong control over most of their con- uh, companies. It seems like that uh, as opposed to the US companies where they leave it open. And it's a bit more of a free free market thing, yeah. like government yeah. intervention and all that. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so let's just move on. So let's just say if you're an investor in the Chinese company that's in the US, you know, maybe you own Alibaba. I think some people would own like Alibaba. So what would you do? What would you do if you own, uh, you know, uh, Chinese company that's in the US, have all this, everything hanging over your head, all these things hanging, hanging over your head, what would you do? Well, actually for me, it's just about managing your exposure, it's about risk, you, you cannot, uh, you cannot be overly concentrated in Chinese companies mm-hmm. or in any company at all. So we, in this case, I probably keep to around like three to five percent allocation, but not more than that. I mean, mm-hmm. or maybe smaller. So depending on how comfortable you are uh, with with it. So. It's but if you choice. already own those shares in uh, U.S. listed, I mean Chinese companies like Alibaba, I think what you can do is, of course, one way is to do a conversion from the ADR to the Hong Kong side. I can always ch- check with your broker on how to do the conversion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The other way, of course, you can just dump the share U.S. share just. No, and then just buy the one that's listed in uh, Hong Kong. This is the most mm-hmm. simplified process because you remove the unknowns whether the you know, Alibaba will be able to comply with uh, the orders, right? Okay. So that it will remove a lot of uncertainties. Yeah. So if you're saying for those you know shareholders who are a bit you know afraid of the risk, they yeah. can just do a conversion or just sell and buy in Hong Kong. Yeah. yeah. Rather than but there's some who could just possibly hold on, and that's okay as well, right? Yeah. 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 You just wait for the privatization offer. Uh, okay, okay. That so if they decided that, to go private, yeah. which is unlikely yeah. happen to yeah. Alibaba, but most probably like other companies that have, don't have dual listing uh-huh. structure okay. like Trip, which I think recently the rumor mm-hmm. has it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, like, this is some yeah. of the option that you can but, consider. But I think the chance of delisting is still not very clear, but it may mm. be a very low probability because like like we, we mentioned earlier, you know, it's like one point eight billion, one point eight trillion gone, you know, if mm-hmm. if Trip. this were to ha- yeah. happen, you know. From right. the, just the market cap yeah, is going to so, be removed from the US. Yeah, US. I think US do not want to lose the China yeah. market pie. Well, we, we don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's they are playing a different game. It's yeah. no longer about <laughs> the money, but they want to have <laughs> supremacy over certain things over China. Yeah. That, yeah. that could be the case, right? Yeah. And then 1.8 trillion is just, okay. I mean, I'm yeah. willing to give that up, you know, for, the, for, that, for that goal. So let's just move on. I think it's not just about this. Um, I mean, this whole US-China relationship is just getting a little more you know, complicated as the years go by, especially recently. So it's not just about delisting the Chinese companies, but the, the US also wants to ban certain technologies on US soil as well. So the most famous famous one is basically Huawei, right? Yeah. So uh, I think we've heard a lot about that. Mm-hmm. But they also want to ban, uh, I mean, Huawei was because there's a, there's a you know, a allegation of um, back doors and, and security uh, flaws and all that, and they don't want that happening. Uh, for the 5G networks in the US. So that's a, that's a whole thing altogether. But you know, even in terms of like apps like uh, TikTok and uh, WeChat, the US seemingly wants to ban those apps as well. 
So why why do you think that's the case, and why why do you think you know the US wants to ban all these you know these apps? Yeah, so I think the trigger for the ban when it comes to Chinese apps is mainly because of the security reason, right? Okay, because, so it's uh, the same thing. Yeah, I mean, US government afraid that Chinese uh, Chinese government will spy on their citizens uh, through <laughs> apps like TikTok or yeah. other WeChat. Okay, Have so even on TikTok, <laughs> <laughs> what would they be spying on? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All the fan, all the crazy. Maybe videos, huh? what the Americans are watching yeah. okay, <laughs> okay. in terms of the categories. I don't know. I mean, I, I know your, your microphone is on, right? In the TikTok, yeah. so maybe they can hear you. And all I know. Right? I'm sure. I'm sure that there, there are many ways you can get yeah. information and data. But yeah. I'm just looking, yeah. going on TikTok. It's just, a, it's just so hilarious. <laughs> If you're gonna ban it, I think you should just ban TikTok. I think it's a good thing. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, yeah. So please, sorry. Yeah. So it's just a basically just a retaliation from uh, U.S. government, right? Okay. Because when a lot of in the initial days, uh, when a lot of American tech companies were very successful, like mm -hmm. companies like Google, mm -hmm. Facebook, they were trying to enter China market, but Chinese government refused to let them to come in because they are going to be able to access a lot of sensitive information about their citizen details and stuff like that and they were banned until today right yeah. so now american government is just trying to you know retaliate using uh uh TikTok as TikTok is one of the uh <laughs> the platform where they want to block them right mm -hmm. because uh the trigger is actually TikTok because TikTok is the very first app that become very successful globally not just in china but mm -hmm. they managed to crack the global market and it's the first time in the history that uh is a tech company giant company that actually managed to crack this code yeah. so uh, I mean, from U.S. point of view, is that you know they have always had the global influence, uh, and they have a global monopoly when it comes to tech scenes. Right? So mm -hmm. one way, of course, or one of the reason that they are trying to ban is also they're trying to suppress uh, some Chinese tech company uh, dominating the global market. Okay, so the best way to do it is banning them, right? Mm -hmm. And by stating that it's for security reasons. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there are many reasons. I mean, this is just my guess. Yeah, a lot of people think that like uh, the U.S government is like bullying the Chinese companies, right? Like, uh, in a way, uh, uh, they like so-called like stealing the technology, what they have created, right? But the thing is, this happened to uh, the US companies back in the days too, right? Google, mm. I mean, I, I, you guys heard about Google, right? They went into yeah. China and they got blocked because they wanted them to share the yeah. technology with the Chinese government and at the same time, uh, to disclose the, or, or they had to censor the basically the searches and, mm -hmm. and, and also yeah. share the data, right? Yeah, algorithm. Yeah. Algorithm. Yeah. So in a way, I think the Chinese company has been doing uh, a lot of this, right? I think a lot of people who, who uh, are, are looking to do business in China, they have to find a local partner. Mm -hmm. In a way, the local partner is also someone who's trying to learn what's going on. And so they kind of reverse engineer the whole yeah. process <laughs> yes. of how these companies work and all that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and in a way, it's so-called stealing technology, but not really stealing. <laughs> like no, I'm not stealing. stealing. They call it after. <laughs> <laughs> modeling. Right? Legally copying. Okay. Yeah, legally mm -hmm. copying this stuff. And after they come up, and then of course the Chinese, the Chinese would like to protect their own uh, company, nurture yeah. them and grow. Mm -hmm. So they block out competition. Like, you know, Baidu, once you block out Google, Baidu is just... Maybe the technology is not as good, but because mm. it's the only one there, it's yeah. a monopoly. Same with yeah. Union Pay, and they blocked out Visa and Mastercard and all yeah. that. As yeah, well, right? that's right. Yeah, that's right. So that's the way they kind of like protect the domestic market from uh, foreign companies having control over the Chinese market. Because like, can you imagine if Google or, or Visa or Mastercard had that dominant position? Then I think that could be quite tricky for Chinese government. Yep. So now it's, it's the other way around. It's the, the other side of the coin, and now the US is trying to prevent China from doing the same thing. Yeah. Through through banning some of the technologies and even the apps nowadays. So that's that's what you see is happening. Yeah. So yeah. I think it is more like an economic cold war. It's no longer yeah. the, the old days where it's all about, you know, fighting with your military weapons and stuff. It's all yeah. about economics, right? The financials yeah. and then yeah. at the same time it's all all about technology. Who who is superior, right? A lot of people talk about the supply chain because now uh, the US actually outsourced most of their manufacturing to China, right? Then mm -hmm. their advantage is basically their uh, intellectual property, IP, right? The yeah. mm -hmm. IP, the high end stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Pharmaceuticals, innovation, semiconductor. But the thing is, Chinese is still behind. So, in a way, they are trying to thwart their, their growth mm -hmm. so that eventually, if China is ahead, there's nothing left for Americans, right? Because they outsource their manufacturing, they can't, they can't sell their IP to China. Mm -hmm. So, there's nothing left. So, they're not competitive enough to keep yeah. up. So uh, that would be a problem for. So I guess the the is the bigger picture here is that 
these countries are competing to be the global hegemon, mm. who is the, the, the top dog in the world. And you know, now China is rising, the US wants to protect their dominance, I guess, since they've been uh, yeah. the, num the number one, I mean, the superpower in the last 50 to 70 yeah. years. Yeah. And then China's going to cha possi yeah. possibly change that. So will TikTok, <laughs> will TikTok sell themselves to Microsoft? Microsoft is one of the top well, buyers. You know? Well, they have no choice but to sell. But now things get a little bit more complicated with Chinese government now uh, coming out with the new rule saying that you know, Chinese companies, if you want to sell your foreign business, you need to get approval mm. from the Chinese government. TikTok, the major success or the reason why they become very successful is the algorithm that they have, right? They get, mm. they manage to crack the codes on how to get users to, you know, get addicted to their apps. <laughs> <laughs> because the amount of time they spend on the TikTok actually has been increasing, you know, over the past few years. So now it's hanging in the air. We do not know what is going to outcome is going to be. Mm. Uh, either TikTok is going to disappear overnight or they could be bought over by US companies without the algorithm which defeat the purpose because the reason why TikTok becomes successful again is because of the algorithm and mm -hmm. the US want the algorithm, Chinese government refused So you think the, give. the algorithm <laughs> won't go along with the sale of the US operations of TikTok? Well, that's what Chinese government, you know... They, they, they want to prevent that? Yeah, they yeah. want to prevent that from okay. happening, right? They rather write it off, keep the algorithm to themselves, like how Google keeps their algorithm to themselves, right? So it's, yeah. it's, it's really about this, techno this algorithm or technology, it's not just about the user base that's being yeah. Google. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I think, I think there are two outcomes. One is basically TikTok is sold to a US enterprise, yeah. or it's not sold and it gets banned. That's the, that's the, those are the yeah. two outcomes, right? Yeah. All yeah. Right. yeah. Or there could be a third outcome, which basically this whole thing is dropped and then... <laughs> no more TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> I don't For know. Maybe it's just, users. It goes yeah. on as yeah. normal. But okay, so this is something yeah. that could happen to TikTok. But TikTok is a private company. And companies, yeah. We can't invest in it. There's nothing to do with us investors and all that. But what about WeChat? WeChat is owned by Tencent, right? And yeah. some of us might be Tencent investors and WeChat could be banned in the US. So what yeah. could happen to WeChat then? Especially if you're an investor, what does it mean uh, for you? Okay, so for Tencent, I think WeChat, there are two versions of it. Well, for the international app, it's called WeChat. But the mm -hmm. uh, one that is really more successful is actually Weixing, which is what they call it in China. Yep. And a lot of Chinese can't leave you know, without Weixing, the app itself. Yep. Right? They can leave without Apple, but not the Weixing itself. Okay. Uh, so what is going to affect Tencent is that they are WeChat. Uh, revenue from the global market or rather the whole revenue, the top line of 10 cents from the international market is actually less than 5% okay. and just within the US itself, it actually contributed less than 2%. So the mm. impact to uh, 10 cents uh, top line and bottom line is just going to be limited. Mm. You know, if let's say they go to uh, you know, implement this uh, law mm -hmm. and they're going to ban the WeChat app altogether. In fact, there are a lot of users in uh, international market for WeChat will be affected because these people rely on WeChat to talk to a lot of Chinese, uh, not only their friends or their family members or those who do Chinese, uh, business in China mm -hmm. like Apple, uh, Walmart, okay, they depend on WeChat platform as a whole to you know, mm -hmm. reach out to their users in China mm -hmm. through marketing right? because WeChat is almost everything in china right you want to uh if you live in china you can you, you must know, have WeChat. You, you must have wechat yeah. right because yeah. a lot of payment you need to use uh, wechat uh, and stuff like that okay so i think it will affect more of uh us companies than uh, wechat itself hmm. uh in fact uh, i think apple is uh one of the uh, quite a big players in china right because a lot of chinese hmm. like iphone hmm. and if they were to ban uh wechat Meaning to say that the, Chin the Chinese who buy Apple or iPhone, right, they can't download WeChat. You know, they, they actually did a survey about over 1 million Chinese users and they found out that Chinese, 95% of them actually prefer to have WeChat than Apple itself, right? So what this means is that if they really were to implement this rule, uh, I think uh, the sales for uh, Apple in China could be negatively affected. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so what you're saying is that the, ten, the US revenue for 10 cents is only 2%. It's 2%. So yeah. even if WeChat was banned in the US, uh, it's not going to really hit 10 cents a whole lot. Yeah, it's not that much. Of their revenue. Okay, so the ruling now, of course, is quite vague. You don't mm. know what is the coverage, whether it's going to include their subsidiary, their investment. I mean, 10 cents invested in 100 world companies, and a few of them are actually listed in the US. That includes Tesla. Right, so I don't think that's going to happen. It's going to implement that into the, all the subsidiary or associates that they have. Mm -hmm. But it's most likely going to be restricted within the WeChat app because they already say that it could be a security reason. The 
that they be spying on all these uh, American citizens, you know, through their phones or whatever not reason they actually bring it up. Yeah. Okay. But you think there's gonna be there could be outflow from not just I mean it, it it could I mean there's a direct effect on Tencent right it's, it gets the, the the app gets banned in China but there's other things that happen down the line so like yeah. you're saying Apple could have difficulty selling their iPhones yeah because the Chinese users can't download WeChat yeah yeah in China yeah so, so they will affect more American companies than a Chinese company yeah. actually yeah. the only thing that's happened is basically Huawei right Huawei mm. they ban the use of Google. Mm. The Android platform on Huawei and that caused the sales to drop because people use it be because oh, of okay. the Google and the, the e ecosystem basically, right? Okay. So, and that affected the business and even now they are considering uh, dropping the business, the, the selling phones basically for Huawei because I don't think their phones, their phones was, was very well received, mm. were very well received when it came out but because of the dropping of Android, it's a risk to most people so people decided to switch over to Samsung or other Android phones instead. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what? So you're saying would the would? So you're saying Chinese users? So the iPhone would be banned from downloading the the WeChat app. It's gonna remove be removed from the App Store yeah. because that's the ruling for yeah. the U.S. government. Yeah. You can't even download it if yeah. on the App Store because yeah. that's a U.S. platform. So that's what you're saying. Yeah, but there's this lawsuit in uh, U.S. that's ch challenging this order because some American really rely on the app. Mm -hmm. Or WeChat. Mm -hmm. So I think TikTok, of course, uh, I mean, it's just an entertainment app, right? If you ban it, yeah, okay. that's it. But WeChat <laughs> is different, right? People yeah, do yeah. it for so. business and a lot of money uh, at stake. Okay. Yeah. I think TikTok, once you ban it, you just benefit Facebook. I mean, a lot of people are trying <laughs> to you know, transfer the users and tell them, oh, okay, please go over to my Instagram. Mm -hmm. you know, and Instagram is owned by Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're actually crippled, right? When you don't have like WeChat or WeChat, yeah. right? Or uh, in China, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, nowadays, I think people really rarely uh, carry their wallet anymore. It's all about digital wallets, yeah. right? Alipay and, uh, yeah. and Weixing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, this just goes to show how interconnected the economy is nowadays compared to maybe in, in the 1970s or 80s when there was the, you know, the US and the Soviet Union kind of Cold War. That was more ideological, but now it's more of like economic, like economic Cold War, but it's a lot more complicated because in economic terms, there's so many links between the US and China and all these other cascading effects that you know, that, that happen if you just ban an app here is going to have so much knock-on effects in other areas yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah so uh, so do you think uh, this ban is going to happen, this WeChat thing? It, and it, I mean, it's going to affect a company like Apple. They're going to yeah. use the, lose their Chinese user base, which I think could be quite a sizable amount and they're going to, you know, mm -hmm. suffer in terms of their revenue if the iPhones are not being you know, bought in China because of this. So what do you think it's, about that? Yeah, I think it's anyone guess, but I think the ban may likely affect TikTok more than uh, WeChat. Okay. So if they really go ahead with the ban, mm -hmm. again, TikTok is going to suffer the most actually okay. from this whole banning thing, right? Because again, Tencent, uh, whether they ban it or not, uh, is just 2%, less than 2% US market mm -hmm. as their contribution to the top line. All right. So I'm going to ask all of you, so if you own shares of Tencent, what would you do? I think. I mean, it looks quite clear, yeah. but just to, just to have a, ask you on the spot, what yeah. do you think? What do you I think do? there's not much of an impact. La, I, okay. I, I do own Tencent, I was still just still hold, continue holding it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I think uh, you own Tencent, basically, uh, I'm looking at focusing on the Chinese market, right? As long as it's intact, yeah. most of the yeah. revenue comes from there, I think it's not a big issue at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when yeah. the ban took place, and when they announced the ban, I think Tencent's share price dropped by 10%, I think within a few mm -hmm. days. It's quite a bit though. Yeah, it's quite a bit. Yeah. 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 If you are Tencent users, I think uh, it's the impact is very minimal. So it makes sense if you are investing for Tencent for a long run to keep them to keep holding them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't see there's a reason or there's a fundamental fundamental shift because of this ban. Okay. Because yeah. Tencent, or uh, even that includes Alibaba, are pretty much domestically driven. Mm -hmm. uh, about their revenue should come from China Chinese market. Chinese market as itself is actually huge right so they can just rely and live with it yeah all right so just to summarize this whole discussion it's more like you know if for alibaba and tencent they're kind of like huge dominant players in just the chinese market yeah they probably sh shouldn't be affected with all this like you know mm -hmm. things that are going on between the us and china yeah. but for other companies you know it could be a bit more uncertain you know like trip could be privatized yeah uh, you don't know what's going to happen down the line and you know maybe we could see a future where you know these two economies and ecosystems are just really separated from one another yeah. mm -hmm. and we really have two different worlds and in two different markets to invest in two different standards for a lot of things 
So I, we, we really don't know what's going to happen. Well, well, an election could change everything, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know, right? Some say it's because of Trump yeah. that's doing all this. But do you think it possibly it could be beyond that? Is this as a whole, yep. beyond presidents that, you know, the, check, the, the, the US wants to remain on top regardless of who the president is? Mm. I mean, we will see. I mean, if, if uh, we will see in November what happens in the US elections and whether things actually change if Biden gets elected, but you know, Trump could still be around for four more years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. so yeah, everyone's silent about that. So, that, <laughs> <laughs> so there's no, no like real solution. The, the yeah. solution is really to understand the companies that you invest in, see how are they affected by yeah. this, and yeah. to monitor the, con continually monitor the situation. And if you're uncomfortable, like, like I said, you should just uh, reduce your risk exposure. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's the way you can manage it. Because the thing is, it doesn't mean that you invest in Chinese companies, that means you do very well in, in investment. Because investment in, uh, investing is all about investing uh, companies below their intrinsic value. You, right so that's why uh, mm -hmm. that's where you can benefit yeah. in the long run yeah. but, but for anyone who doesn't own have any shares of Chinese companies that are listed in US I think uh, if you still are interested or keen to invest in those Chinese tech companies uh, it's always better to go directly to the Hong Kong Stock Exchange okay. now right? Right. so even let's say between Alibaba US or China, uh, Hong Kong, I'll probably go to Hong Kong straight away. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's a so lot I think, safer. Yeah, yeah, that's what investing is all about: is about managing your exposure, managing your risk, and you know, taking you know very calculated decisions with where you're gonna invest and park yeah. your money. So I think that's a I think that's a really good discussion. So there's no that's the, just to wrap it up. There's no certainty when it comes to the world of investing, the world of business. Even in, in terms of geopolitics, this is a you know tricky thing between the U.S. and China. So the world is a dynamic place, and that affects your investments. So we as you know investors just have to adapt to what's happening and then just adjust our decisions uh, decisions accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is a really good discussion, guys. So once again, it was Rusmin with me, yep. uh, Victor, and Kenny. And my name is Adam. So thank you so much. We are all from the fifth person. So once again, if you like this discussion, we have a lot more roundtable discussions coming up. If you like this video, just uh, hit the like button. You know, share this with your friends. If any questions, you can know, put them in your the comment box. We would love to have a discussion with you as well. We'll answer all the questions if you have any questions as well. And you know, uh, subscribe to this channel, and we'll have a lot more videos for you. And we'll see you around. See you. Right, see you. See you guys. Bye.